Hey everybody, my name is Jamie. We're going to continue on with part 13 of our series. And in this tutorial, we're at least going to uh, get rid of the white spaces when we reach the corner of our map. And that can be done in the game camera. But first, a few things we have to do. We have to create a new variable in our handler class, and we're going to call it world. And then we're also going to create two new methods. We're going to say get world, and that's going to return the world. Oops, and that's going to be a function that returns the world. And then we'll also have uh, another function, and this one will be called set world. And this will actually set our world. Return world. All right, so we have this set world function. So now if we go into our world class, up here where we have the handler underneath where we set the handler we can say this dot handler dot we can either say that or we can actually just use the pass in handler like so handler dot set world and then we'll pass this in as the world all right so now that we have those set we can come into our game camera here and up the top, we're going to want to include tiles. Make sure to set tile as well. And we're going to now make a a, uh, a new function or a new method uh, where we can check for blank spaces. So we will just put a comma here and we'll say check blank space. And that's a function. And what this is going to do is it's going to check the offsets to see if it is outside of the uh, the scope of the world or outside of the range in which we actually have tiles for our world. So we know that our world's gonna, world's going to start at zero, zero. So we can easily say if x offset is less than zero, then we will set x offset equal to zero. All right. So that's just easily saying if it's if the x offset is reporting a number less than zero, then we will reset the x offset to zero. All right, then we can say else if x offset is greater than handler. So it would be uh, yep handler dot get world. So we're going to get world. Then we're going to get the width of the world. Multiply that by tile dot tile width because the width of our world is going to be in tiles we need to convert it into pixels and then we're going to also subtract the uh, handler dot get width so we can subtract the width of our game in pixels all right so that will end and close the if statement uh, right there we just need to now set it if it is greater than that we will reset it equal to the same equation there so we'll just say off x offset is equal to that so therefore it won't get any larger than that there then we can also come down here and say if y offset is less than zero we will set x or y offset equal to zero, just like we did up there. And similarly, we'll say else if y offset is greater than handler dot get world dot get height multiplied by tile dot tile height minus the handler dot get height and just like the other one we will copy this here and we'll copy it and set x and y offset equal to it all right So now 
uh, nothing will actually change because we don't call this function anywhere. So what we will want to do is let's set it for uh, our move right here. We will call that. We'll say this dot check link space, and then we'll also do it on our center to entity at the bottom. So check link space. So we're calling these whenever we're moving uh, the the camera. So now if I come here and we refresh the page. All right. So now look at our guy. Oh, get height is not a function. So if we come to our world, we do not have a world get height. So let me go to the world, and we do need to add those. So we'll say uh, get height is a function that will return this dot height so we need to return that and we'll do the same thing for width so I'll come up here and we'll say width return this dot width and put a comma there alright let's see what we got going on now and did I not put a in our game camera we do have to make sure in our function that we have our open close for these here get height is still undefined or the property get height of undefined so handler get world so if we go to if we go to our handler we have get world here and where we return world and we have set world ah see set world is supposed to take in a world and set the world to it I don't know why I didn't do that world is equal to underscore world now let's try this There we are. So now we will hit the edge and we will go to the bottom. Now the only problem is we're going off the screen. So let's take care of that and try to do some collision detection. All right. Let's go to our a player class. Let's go to player and creature. We'll open both of these. Let's close a couple things. Let's close the game and the world and the game camera. All right, so let's create a new class and it's going to be in our graphics package. I'm going to create a new package and I'm going to call this shapes. And in here, I'm going to create a new class and it's going to be called rectangle. like so and we will add that right now into here it will be rectangle that's an app slash classes slash gfx slash shapes slash rectangle all right so now we have access to it um, so in this class we are just going to basically create a class for rectangles. Uh, it's a really simple class. So we will define require class and we will declare the function passing class along. All right. So in here, we will say var rectangle is equal to class.extend and we will pass in 
the initialized function inside of the object. This will take an x, a y, a width, and a height. And it will set this.x equal to x, this.y is equal to y, this.width is equal to width, and this.height is equal to height. So this is all for this class. It's a real simple one. All right. Oops. And everything is set fine in here, I think. All right, now let's go into our entities class. We'll open that up. And this is where we will actually use that rectangle class. So in the entity class, we will require a rectangle, pass it along as rectangle. We're going to create this dot bounds, and that's going to be set to a new rectangle. And it's zero, zero, width and height for default. All right, so now if we go into our player class, we do now have bounds and we can uh, we can change these. So this essentially bounds will be our collision area. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to try to set this uh, for what I would consider the collision area for our little character. So I will say this.bounds.x We'll set that to 5. Then we will set the y to 25. This dot bounds dot width is equal to 15. And this dot bounds dot height is equal to 15. All right, so these numbers should work really well with our character. And to test that, what we can do is come down here and we say g dot fill rect. I'm going to fill a rectangle right now. So this dot bounds dot x plus this dot x. That will give us our x position, and we will make sure uh, it's relative to our character. This dot bounds dot y plus this dot y will give us the starting position for the y of it. And then we'll just use this dot bounds dot width for the width and this dot bounds dot height for the height. So this should render it to the screen. There's just one thing that we do have to add to the end of these. We do have to grab the handler x offset and handler y offset so that we get uh, the position uh, uh, with the camera. So we will do that in the y as well, but we'll say y offset. So now if we come to our page and refresh it, we have a problem with one of our, oh, I forgot to put the minus there. All right. So now we have a little box on our character, and it is currently where I want the collision area to be. So now that we've got that, let's move on. So what we need to do now, let me move this up here. What we need to do now is come to our uh, creature class, and we're going to create some uh, code for the creature class based on the bounds. So one thing that we are going to do is drastically change our move functions. So one thing we want to do is say if this dot x move is greater than zero, we will create a temporary x. So basically we're just going to say only do this if it is greater than zero. Um, if we are moving to the right. We'll set a temporary x equal to, and we're going to parse this as an integer. So we will say 
like so this dot x plus this dot x move so this means we're going to take the position that it will be in after it moves um, in this next tick we're going to add to that this dot bounds dot x plus this dot bounds dot width and what this does is this is going to get us to the far right side of our bounds um, but in the next position where we would where we will be uh, the next time it renders if we set it to this position so basically we're checking to see if where it will be and we're going to divide this by tile dot tile width because we were going to we're getting a pixel right here and what we want to do is we want to get uh, a tile in the X so we're, we're saying uh, the temporary X variable is going to be set to a tile the tile in the X direction that our uh, the right side of our bounding box is going to be touching or be part of or inside of essentially so if that is the case and we are moving to the right we will then say also if this dot collision with tile and we're going to create this function in a second and it's going to take in a temporary X or it's going to take in an X position which we've stated right there what it's going to be and then it will take and we're going to parse this as an integer as well a Y position and this is just going to be this uh, this dot Y plus this dot bounds dot Y divided by tile dot tile height all right so what this is is this is just going to get the uh, top right corner so with the X position on the far right and then in this case the Y position the top part of the bounds and then we are dividing it by tile height so we can get the Y uh, or the the uh, column or sorry the row that the tile is that we're going to be touching so as you can see we have white here and that is also because we do not have access to tile yet so we'll need to include that in the top um, what we'll do here is we will now move it so this dot X plus equals and I'm gonna parse as an integer this dot X move and this is just going to create a little bit uh, little bit better movement without such uh, without the chance of being on an a a partial pixel which isn't possible so we've got this in the X move for when we're going to the right so um, now what we need to do is create that function and we're also going to include tile in here so we'll say tile and pass it along tile now we have access to that and we're going to create this dot collision with tile so I'm going to come below our get Y but above our getter and we'll say if oh, we'll say uh, collision with tile and that'll be a function that passes in an X and a Y and we are just going to return return this dot handler dot get world dot get tile X oops get tile passing in X and Y and we're going to pass in the is solid function that we had created oops from uh, within the tile instance all right so we do have in our in our world class we come to our world class we should have the function get tile here we're just tapping into that uh, in our creature class and we're returning whether the tile is solid or not make sure to put a comma after your function so with this being said let me go to our game and let's try something if it, we don't have any errors which we do have 
a error in our creature class. The error is line 39. If this dot x move is greater than zero, and oh, we have some extra characters over here. All right, there we go can't have extra characters just laying around all right let me see what we got so uh, get tile is not a function because I forgot to put the open close parentheses because this is a function get world is a method of the world class all right so it looks like we don't have anything going on to move right, or sorry, left. But if we move right, look at that. He gets stopped. Now we can't move back out of here um, to show, you know, collision because I only have directional movement in the one side. But if you look, we can't go any further to the right. So that is actually a good sign. So now we can take our code in. the uh, class right here for our X move and we'll add another another if oh there's where it is it's way over there so we'll add another if uh, into this and we'll say and 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 we're going to copy this whole thing up to the ands and we're going to paste it and we're only going to change the fact that we are going to add to the y this dot bounds dot height so now we're going to check if the bottom right corner is colliding and um, if that's the case we we will also stop him then now uh, we need to work in the other direction so this is if he's moving to the right if we just say else here and pass in very similarly this exact same thing only we are going to uh, take off bounds width right here so that we get uh, so that we just get the left side but we're gonna keep everything else the same and that should allow us to move to the right without uh, and, and have collisions on the right so if you look we cannot either way we go we are not lighting or sorry we are not passing through so now we've essentially created oh the only problem is we uh, we went out of bounds because we aren't having collisions on the uh, up and down direction yet so let's go ahead and do that we are going to now take everything we have in here for the X copy it let's go down into the Y move we're going to paste it in here we're going to change y move we're going to change temporary x to temporary y we're going to change x's to y's here and y's to x's and widths to heights so we're essentially doing the exact same thing only changing up uh, some of these variables here so we're going to use tile height And this will be tile width. This will be tile width here. Or this will be bounds dot width, bounds dot x, bounds dot x, 
And the only difference is we got to take this y and pass it in after oops pass it in after our uh, our x so oops, t y the temporary y goes in after so close that and this actually goes here all right, so just make sure that we are putting the temporary Y in the correct position in the collision with tile uh, function, TY, there. And so this is the first part still going to be with the X's. Then we have TY, and we will change this dot Y plus equals Y move. And do the same thing down here, Y, y y move y and tile height this is going to be tile width we'll move tile uh, tx from there and put ty over here this will be width Uh, tile width y move y remember to move the tx out of there and put ty here all right in this I believe is everything that needs to be done. We'll just double check. We've got X needs to be here because we've got tile width and X needs to be here as well. Same thing with this X and X. So just make sure that when we're doing this, all of the Y's and the X's were, were changed. All right. Temporary Y. And we don't need to set bar ty here. We should have it twice. That should be fine. I think it's just saying that we have var twice and it's not realizing that it is in two different functions. So let's see what we have going on. We've got collision on the far right. Oh, it looks like we have some sort of error with the uh, Y. We have something going on right here. We did not change this to X's and widths. All right, did we do the same thing up here? Okay, Let's see if we get a better result. So basically we were just handling each direction in each corner of our player. So if we go to the right, we are colliding. We're colliding to the left. Perfect. If we go to the bottom, we collide with the bottom. Now, if you do notice, look, we're kind of floating along the edges. So we're not actually getting perfect collisions. We do have a little bit of problems here. But you can see that it is colliding, and it's not colliding with our character, but rather the border or its bounds. So um, again, let me just go over kind of what we're doing. So we're, if we're moving positive, we're going to check the far right corner of our box, or our far right side when it comes to the X. That's all we're doing here is getting to the far right of our bounds. Then we're dividing it by tile width so we actually get the tile instead of the pixels. And then we're checking if that tile 
on the X and then on the top uh, the top right corner when we use this um, this Y at the bounds and then we're also checking at the bottom right using the bounds plus the bounds height dividing that by um, tile width so we get the pixel um, and passing it into the collision with tile function which just checks to see if that tile is a solid tile or not and if it is not a solid tile then we continue on with our movement to the right same thing with to the left and then the same thing with up and down we're just checking the each corner to see if it is colliding with a tile that's all we're going to do in this tutorial um, the next tutorial we will fix the collisions so that they are um, a little bit closer to perfect so we don't have these weird gaps between the character and the tile but that's all for this tutorial uh, I hope you guys like it play around and um, and make some tweaks and I will see you in the next video